Winter is coming. Hey there. Before I dive into this new video, I just want to remind you that I'm still collecting money for my new laptop for uh, testing the various distributions for my distro hopping. I need a new one. I'm going to buy a refurbished one for 2000 euros. So we can sp if you can spare a couple of euros, uh, you are most welcome to help me out with that. Also, I have a new thing on my channel here. I will uh, be listing the top commenters on my previous videos in the past 30 days which is ranked by the number of comments, right? I'm going to aim for five spots, but because some of you have the exact same amount of replies on my YouTube uh, videos, then uh, this list might be a little bit dynamic, um, like more than five, right? May, it may be seven or nine or 10, you know, whatever. Um, so just keep commenting and be on this list. Okay, so let's get the elephant out of the room immediately. Why are you leaving Firefox? Is this a clickbait or something? I mean, of course, it's a clickbait. How do you think YouTube videos works? How do you think internet works, right? So let me let me just tell you a short story uh, before I explain the reasons for removing Firefox from my computer right now. Uh, what I believe in is free software. And of course, Firefox is free software, right? Uh, but, but there is more to it. I, I believe in free software, but I also believe in open web. So how, these, how do these things come together? Free software uh, give you the four freedoms, right? You know which ones they are. Uh, otherwise, you probably wouldn't be on this channel. Uh, from the other side, there is the open web, which cannot really function without having enough of the competition right in the rendering rendering engine space when microsoft made the edge browser for their windows 10 i believe uh it was a good attempt into bringing more players into the pool it's not a free browser it's not a free software but it did contribute to the open web uh in this major way right they did bring their own take on the um, web rendering engine. Uh, and we also have Gecko from uh, Mozilla and Firefox and many forks uh, that come from it. And then we have Safari and the Google Chrome, which are kind of the same, but not really. Uh, so if you don't know the history, how Chrome came to be, um, basically there was the KDE team on uh, Linux, the well-known team that makes uh, KDE Plasma desktop. They made the uh, KHTML uh, rendering engine, uh, that's what they called it. It might be a silly name, but they always name stuff with the letter K. Uh, in, in the name and then Apple came and took this engine for themselves and turned it into a WebKit rendering engine. Basically, it's kind of a fork uh, from what the KDE team did. You know, they, they did have some disagreements, uh, Apple and KDE team. At first, the Apple as a company wasn't very cooperative with the code they took for themselves and later on, uh, they started giving back a little bit, but before they started doing that, uh, Google already took the code from um, Apple, right? And they forked it again into what they now call Blink Engine. And so you now have Chrome, which is based on Safari, which is based on Conqueror from KDE. Uh, so these three are pretty much interconnected in a major way, right? And right now, if you use Conqueror uh, on KDE, uh, it will give you two choices. One of them, one of them is KHTML based on some version of WebKit, and the other one is um, a Blink from uh, Google, right? So you can use two rendering engines. The way Conqueror handles uh, Google's web rendering engine is pretty good, and all the web pages render. Uh, correctly for me. Whatever I tried, it worked out of the box uh, pretty good and I have had zero complaints about that. But the problem with Conqueror web browser is that, first of all, it, it's a chicken and egg problem. Nobody uses this browser and because nobody uses this browser, nobody invests into this browser anymore. And nobody invests into this browser anymore because nobody uses it. So uh, it's kind of a mixed up circle. 
but the problem with this browser is that it's not really a good web browser. It can open the web page if you type the URL. It can render the web page uh, correctly, but that's about it. It has no extensions uh, and it has no customizations and it's pretty lousy. Um, from the user experience perspective. So this is my um, kind of a short review on Conqueror. I did try to use it, but I failed. And like, just take it uh, as my short review, uh, because I'm going to give you a, sh a little bit of opinions on various web browsers. So let's go back to the Mozilla, right? So the problem with Mozilla's uh, Firefox web browser is well, there, there is no problem. It, it contributes to the open web. It is free software. So what is the problem, right? Is it politics? Nah, I don't care about politics. The problem that I had with that browser is, you know, when you have many tabs open, th there is a little check upside down like um, Chevron. Uh, it's called list all tabs. And up to the version 130, I believe, I could remove this button from the about um, colon config web page uh, on the configuration page, on the advanced uh, configuration page of the Firefox. And after version 130, they removed this option to allow me to remove this button. And you are now thinking like, what kind of stupid reason is that for leaving the whole web browser, right? Of course, it's a stupid reason. It's not really a reason why I uh, dumped this web browser. It's just that I like to test new stuff. I like to report on new stuff. I like to tell you about my experience. And overall, I am a geek who likes to be involved in a lot of free software stuff. And I, I like to know firsthand what I'm talking about. And the only way to have you know, a voice that talks uh, from the perspective, uh, from the experience of firsthand uh, is by testing all kinds of stuff, uh, all kinds of software, right? So the actual reason why I'm not using Firefox anymore is because I want to learn more software. And at the beginning, I wanted to try something truly uh, free software. So I picked like um, uh, Epiphany, which is the GNOME web browser. That one is actually based on Apple's WebKit. Uh, and I said to myself, okay, this is a better choice for helping the open web instead of using something that's Chromium based. Uh, but that web browser is as lousy as um, KD Conqueror is, like no extensions and overall user experience is quite shit. Uh, and if you are in any way invested in using the web, uh, I would not really recommend uh, this browser. Uh, also, it cannot play YouTube videos. I cannot explain it, but it just doesn't work. So it's kind of shit. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to spit on software that is made by a lot of volunteers. It's, it's just not a good product. So then you have Opera web browser. In the beginning, Opera was really a good web browser. In my opinion, they have been contributing to the open web with their own uh, rendering engine and they had some innovations that other browsers uh, did not do at the time and um, the team that worked on Opera browser was pretty good they are now uh, some of them now work on Vivaldi web browser they're they pretty good people pretty good programmers uh, so if you care about who is working on a web browser uh, I would actually recommend you to take a look into Vivaldi but just to wrap up the, the question about Opera, Opera has left their own rendering engine in favor of Chromium. Uh, and also they have been bought uh, by a certain company, which I don't like. They are focused a lot on two things, making you pay for their services and making fun of everything and everyone on the internet in the name of engagement farming. And all of that I really don't like. Uh, if they have kept the original rendering engine, maybe they would have been worth uh, considering, but all things considered, it's not a good browser. So you have a lot of uh, forks from Firefox and others like Falcon, Midori, cute browser uh, with the Vim style key bindings, uh, but built with uh, cute LibreWolf, uh, also a Firefox fork. Pale Moon, another Firefox fork, Six C Monkey, 
uh, Water Fox, a, a lot of forks from Firefox. But the problem with Firefox forks, uh, including what is, what was the name? Uh, just give me a second. The name Florp, right? Florp, um, another Firefox uh, fork. Uh, the problem is that they all look pretty much the same, and they all seem to be falling under the same. How do I put it? it it's like they are all some kind of soft forks. Uh, it, they don't differentiate enough for me to kind of take them seriously because when Mozilla has removed my ability to uh, modify my browser to my likings, when they removed the ability for me to remove the button which I don't use, uh, and it kind of annoys me because this this uh, Chevron button looks exactly the same like Minimize button on KDE Plasma and they are one next to each other so that's kind of uh, confusing. Uh, so when they uh, disallowed me to remove this button, this kind of uh, code trickles down to all other forks uh, unless you use some kind of skin uh, on the um, Firefox. And this is where we are entering the space where I'm still not comfortable enough to test all these things. I mean, the way I approach things is the way I like it and I can't be persuaded to do things the way I don't do things naturally. So the way I do things is that I test browsers as they are. So one of the things that people uh, have against Vivaldi is that it's not open source in the, in the sense it's not free software, right? A part of it is, a part of it is it's closed, like their, their secret sauce of what makes their browser special. And I have read about it on their blog posts. Uh, basically, they are a small company and they are afraid that somebody bigger, a bigger fish is going to come and steal their secrets uh, and just market it as their own thing while uh, Vivaldi team did all, the, all of the work, right? And this is basically the um, same argument behind all pretty much all closed software because you have to have some kind of business model and in order to have a business model you have to lock your software down and not let people take your code modified and basically if you allow people those four freedoms some of these people will be bad actors and if you don't have the ammunition to counter uh, these bad actors then your company might be in trouble your employees might be in, in trouble in, in financial trouble right so in one way I completely understand this. In another way, I'm here to talk to you about free software and this is where Vivaldi kind of um, falls into the water. Uh, so I would leave this browser up to you to consider it what matters to you because on, on one end, it's really a good browser. Personally, I don't even mind uh, what a lot of you um, have against Vivaldi and that is that the browser is trying to be a kind of a Swiss army knife uh, because it does RSS feeds, it, do, it does emails, it does uh, news groups also, I think. Um, it does all, all kinds of things and you, you can turn off those things. I don't mind, I actually like their web um, browser combined with the email browser in one package. It's kind of practical, right? So further, further up we go, we have Google Chrome and Chromium open source. So Chromium open source, okay, this one is uh, a kind of a no-brainer, but also a brainer, <laughs> if that's a word, because this browser uh, might be open source and not affiliated with Google quite directly and tightly as Chrome is, but still it does have the button to log into Google services and um, it is uh, still Chromium based, Blink based and overall I don't quite see myself using it uh, because it still falls down under what Google um, dictates. It's it's not really what I would consider uh, using for myself. Only one left is Brave. So this one is open source, like free software. Uh, it has a very good ad blocker and um, privacy guard that they called shields uh, with one word, right? Uh, what I do mind about uh, Brave is that they have this um, cryptocurrency going on and at first they started like with giving rewards to content creator creators which would I suppose market uh, their browser to other people and they would get some funds in form of uh, cryptocurrency that they use uh, 
uh, I, I forgot what was the name of their cryptocurrency, but overall, I'm and I'm kind of bothered with all this cryptocurrency stuff. I, I just want to explain something as, as my stance on cryptocurrency because this is important. I don't mind cryptocurrency, but the way I see cryptocurrency is like an alter alternative to fiat money, like something that we can use to buy stuff and sell stuff in a more private manner without uh, unnecessary surveillance and tracking. Uh, but what I do mind is all the mining that comes with it and electricity farming and all the uh, bubble inhaling and blowing like uh, all, all the frauds that are happening. So basically if on one end we have like the main one, the Bitcoin, uh, this one is, in my opinion, fine. If if it gets stable enough, I can see it uh, being uh, transported into the normal usage in our lives. Uh, but the way I would like to use it is uh, if you find value in my content, maybe you could send me some Bitcoin. And if I want to buy uh, a new laptop, uh, maybe I could pay for this laptop with the same Bitcoin. Uh, but if if there wouldn't be if, if there wouldn't be so much fraud going on with all this other cryptocurrency, uh, then all of this would be fine, right? So the ones that is being um, marketed by Brave, I don't know, I just disabled it when I started using the browser uh, and I don't, I don't want to really see it in my browser. I don't like it. But from the side of the um, ad blocking and all around privacy guard that they do, it's pretty much in top top spot number one. And when I compare Brave's uh, content blocking uh, and privacy guard with the Vivaldi's built-in stuff uh, against, uh, let's say, uBlock Origin on Firefox, I would rank it like Vivaldi on the spot number three, the Brave on number one spot, and and Firefox with all the extensions somewhere in between. Uh, so from this perspective, I just wanted to to, to drop a small dig um, under other content creators who sometimes proudly proclaim that they are now leaving Firefox for good or something like that, only to go back to it like one week later because they picked the wrong browser, which uh, they just couldn't use. Uh, and um, the reason why I'm saying this is because I actually switched to Brave like a month or two ago and it has been a good ride so far and the reason I am making this video is because I'm pretty happy with the browser. It serves my needs, although it does uh, have this one tiny bit of a problem, right? It does not contribute to the open web. Uh, because it uses Google's Blink engine, which is pretty much a monopoly on the desktop browser engine space. On the mobile, I actually think this is Safari, but I'm not 100% sure. You can look it up easily on the internet. So there we have it. Um, I, I just noticed that when I talk like more than 10 minutes, my uh, speech becomes um, pretty bad and not very uh, listenable. So if you're still listening at this minute, like kudos to you and thank you very much for supporting me for this long and uh, i guess i'm gonna see you in the next video right Bye.